It doesn't matter how good a rider you think you are, even the professionals crash. So that's why it's important to have some good body protection. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a range of products from our partner brand, POC, to show you the different types of body protection available and how they suit different types of riders. In mountain biking, there's really two types of helmet. There's the full face and then the open face, or what I'd probably call a trail helmet. Uh, so these are more suited to cross country rides. Again, trail rides, enduro riding. They come in different varieties. You can get lighter, more ventilated helmets, but this is my POC Tactile Race. So this is something that I'd use for trail rides, enduro rides, even for popping into town. And one of the main features about this helmet is the vents that it's just designed to draw in the air as you ride along and just really ventilate your head and keep it cool. You do have that protection down the back of your head that you'll see from these trail types of helmets. This one's even got a goggle strap retainer, perfect for those enduro rides. So the trail or the open face helmet is the one that most mountain bikers are going to use. I'm sure you're aware of that, but features to look for when you're trying to buy one of these is just like the added features like this retention system on the back. This one's got a ratchet system, but also adjusts up or down just to make sure it's super snug on the back of your head. It's also got these uh, spin pads, so it takes some of that rotational force. When you do impact your head into the ground, it takes some of that away. Uh, it's got an adjustable peak and it's got high quality straps to make sure again, it's nice and tight and this helmet isn't gonna move on your head. So this is my carbon Coronair, so the premium one, and this is the one I'll be racing here at the EWS in Finale. I've already whacked the back of my head with this one on. Uh, so with the premium one, you've got a carbon shell, you've got that EPP core, and again, you've got the spin liner inside to take out those rotational forces. You've got these pads, cheap pads that pull out super easily, and also that peak that just sort of pops off, just to try and take away any chance of injury if you land on your face. So it's got those spin pads inside and that stands for shearing pad inside. So that's POC's own proprietary technology. It's got silicon pads in there, again, to take away those rotational forces. You've even got ear chambers in there. So I think that's the first time I've heard about that. Heard about that, good joke. In a full face helmet. And that's really to help give you space and so no padding around your ear. And that's helped balance and hearing. Now on to body protection. This is the Spine VPD Air Vest. So you've got three layers of back protection. Again, it's lightweight and ventilated, and it's available in three different sizes, small, medium, and large, and in two different fits. So slim and regular to make sure it fits perfectly and it's low profile. So the Air Vest, as you'd expect from its name, is really well ventilated to try and keep you cool at the same time as protecting you. But if you're not so keen on that and you like using a backpack, there are other options and you can get that spine protection built into that backpack. So this is the Spine VPD backpack. So there you can see that protection built into that backpack. Again, super well ventilated. Of course, now you've got 13 litres of space to chuck in all your bits and bobs. You've also got pockets on those straps for tools, things like that. And quite uh, important for enduro riders is you've got space to actually strap your helmet into that backpack if you want to take it off for transitions. Full face or open face. Now moving on down the body to the elbows, often something that hits the ground the hardest. These are the VPD Air lightweight elbow pads. So the VPD Airs are a lightweight elbow pad. You can get bigger, bulkier ones that offer more protection, but these are really about comfort, ventilation, and compression that doesn't restrict movement. So something to suit those trail and enduro riders, but if you're maybe a free rider or a downhill racer, then you might want to look at something a bit bulkier but with more protection. And don't forget about padding for comfort. So I always use padded bib shorts when I ride, and these are the XE Air bibs. So designed to be used under your shorts and your jersey, because they're super ventilated. You don't want to wear these out by themselves. But nice and cool as you ride. Cool feature as well is in the back of these bibs, you've got those stash pockets. So great for chucking in bars, gels, even you know a spare tubes. So you could potentially ride without a backpack. <laughs> Now 
on to knee pads, something that I find really important. I almost always wear knee pads. I've had loads of knee injuries in the past, so super important and loads of different options out there. So here we've got the VPD Air knees and then we've got the VPD System knees. So let's start with the VPD Air knee pads, just like the elbow pads, designed about comfort, compression and ventilation. So you can see that pre-shaped curve in there sitting nicely and comfortably over your kneecap. Great for pedaling around in. And this really is suited to cross country and trail riding where you're not riding the gnarliest of terrain. Right to the VPD system, this is the one that you'll probably see me riding in all the time in the videos. It's my preferred choice of knee pad. It's really got more material between your knee and the ground when you fall off. And something that, well, I've got a really nice sunny day today, but when it's cold at home in the UK, they can feel a little bit stiff. So you stick them on your knee and your body heat uh, really warms them up and they really get nice and flexible. And I'll pedal big days in these knee pads as well. So these VPD systems have got that abrasion resistant stuff on the front and they're two ply, so like I said before, just two layers of material inside, almost like tires, giving more protection over the knee. Nice and ventilated. You can get knee pads that go longer down the front of your shin. Again, great for more coverage, but for me, uh, they're a bit hot for the most type of riding I do, but if you're riding downhill, free ride, riding skate parks, stuff like that, that might be a good option. You can even get those knee pads, the material inside that will stiffen up on impact. Eye protection, now I'm sure you're aware if you ride a mountain bike that debris can fly up off the trail, off your front wheel and go straight into your eye. So it's important to have some eye protection on. Now you'll find with both goggles and glasses there are different features that you should look for. Things like UV protection and interchangeable lenses. You can change out maybe from a tinted to a clear or a blue lens like I've got here for different lighting conditions. In the UK, most of the year I use those blue ones, gives you, you know, sort of a bit of enhancement on what you've got there, but it isn't tinted at all. When you're out here in the lovely Italian sunshine on the Riviera, that's my choice. A feature on some of the POC I wear is this new Clarity. So these are my Aura goggles with that Clarity system. And it's all about uh, sort of filtering the spectrum of colour. So actually a really interesting feature. So for mountain bikers, often you're riding through trees, out into the open, there's roots and rocks on the ground, and it really just filters those colours, so there's more contrast on those features, so you can see them that little bit better. So these goggles aren't just sort of repurposed motocross goggles used for mountain biking, they're designed around pedaling bikes, so you've got way more ventilation, see that up inside there, so again, perfect for these enduro races where often you're pedaling really hard, you don't want these to steam up or anything like that you still want a good amount of ventilation. Now I always run my goggles with a full face helmet and glasses with an open face. Uh, we do see people sort of switching up those rules and often people run goggles with their open face helmet. Like I said earlier, that Tectal Race has got that strap to hold them on. It does offer actually a good amount of protection with those goggles on, but obviously it's nowhere near as much as having a proper full face helmet. Glasses or goggles, totally up to you. But of course the added bonus of glasses is you can use them casually walking around town. I don't think I'd do that with my goggles. Gloves. Now, these obviously help you maintain grip on the bars in wet conditions or if your hands are getting sweaty, but hands, again, really need protecting. So, again, same with all the other types of pads, you can get different levels of protection with these gloves. You can get all sorts of sort of knuckle pads on there, or even more padding on the palm if you're maybe got soft hands, you're riding for a really long time. I tend to go for really lightweight gloves like these. So you've got that really nice thin palm there, you can really feel the grips and actually not too much protection on the top because I want a lot of ventilation. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of sort of protection you might need for your type of riding. Uh, I'm out here in Finale Agura in Italy. I'm racing the Enduro World Series on some gnarly terrain. It's compulsory to wear a full face helmet and a back protector here, but I'll also have the goggles, the gloves, and those VPD system knee pads on for this race. If you want to see a couple of videos of Blake wearing some different types of protection, click over there for his adventures in Whistler, riding Dark Crystal in an open face helmet and smashing a hardtail in a full face helmet. Give a thumbs up and hit that sub button.